From the day of his appearance on Earth, man has had to search for and later to build himself a shelter. The materials used and the styles of the constructions reflect the degree of civilization which the builders have reached. Modern architecture is changing the aspect of our towns. The windows, which in former days were just more or less incidental features of the facade, have now become large transparent walls letting through abundant sunshine and light. In the last 50 years, our way of life has thoroughly changed and so consequently have our towns. The culture of the Middle Ages is reflected in the architecture of the medieval towns in which we often see no more than their picturesque beauties. We hardly stopped to think that their small windows allowed only a pale semblance of daylight to filter through. And we're also inclined to forget that the people who used to live behind those thick walls had no electricity, no gas, no coal at their disposal. And that all they had to protect themselves against the cold and the damp was the wood fire on their hearth. But man has left the dark ages behind him, and his present day way of life would have amazed even the kings of olden days. New methods and modern materials are available to the architect of our time. Thanks to the manufacture of flat drawn glass, the large window spaces which were still considered a luxury at the beginning of this century have found general application. Drawn glass can in fact be supplied in a wide range of sizes and thicknesses. Its price permits it to be applied extensively in all buildings, even the most modest. The history of this material, although quite young, is still little known. The Romans, used to better climes, first introduced the use of window panes in the northern part of Gaul. Obtained by letting liquid glass run out onto a stone table, the panes would let through light, but you couldn't properly see through them. Around about 1330, starting from glass blown in the form of a bubble, a more or less flat surface about 20 inches in diameter was obtained by means of quick rotation. These window panes were at least transparent although they were quite small and had to be fixed together with lead strips. Another method of manufacturing window glass was in use in Belgium from the beginning of the 19th century till about 1930. A blown cylinder was split lengthwise and flattened out into a sheet in a special oven. It was about 1900 that in the experimental stage the first mechanically drawn glass was produced. A sample of it has been carefully preserved at Charlevoix. The surface quality of that first effort was far from satisfactory, still the new system soon replaced the old method. Emile Foucault, a Belgian engineer who died in 1919, gave his name to the first manufacturing process of mechanically drawn glass. A continuous strip of glass is vertically drawn through a slit in a refractory body which is afloat on the liquid glass. This technique prevents the sheet from shrinking, which is the main difficulty to be overcome. Solidified by cooling immediately after its formation, the glass strip then continues on its way up between the rollers into the drawing machine. Nowadays, the Foucault process is applied in a great number of countries. For some years now, the Univerbel company has been making the use of the Pittsburgh process which was derived from the Foucault method. The refractory body is immersed about four inches under the surface in order to guide the formation of the glass sheet. 
The width is controlled by a set of small wheels along the edges. Now this system has the advantage of safeguarding the surface of the sheet from any contact with foreign bodies as long as it has not solidified. In this way, the surfaces are guarded from any risk of deterioration. Univerbel, the main manufacturer of drawn glass in Belgium, has two factories in the Charleroi region. One at Gilly, the other at Ludelensar, and a third one at Zeebrugge on the North Sea coast. The Zeebrugge factory is the largest and the newest of the three and certainly worth a visit. The manufacture of glass requires sand, soda ash, calcium carbonate, dolomite and feldspar. The purity of each of these materials is carefully checked in the laboratory. The correct proportions necessary to obtain a stable product are guaranteed by the use of accurate scales. The various raw materials are mixed well, after which they'll be taken to the ovens. The mixture is brought into the oven in a continuous and regular stream on a layer of crushed glass called cullet. The mixture of raw materials and crushed glass is fed into the tank entirely automatically. The machines that perform that task have been designed and patented by Univerbel. The new oven at Zeebrugge, the largest in the world, each day swallows 300 tons of raw materials, the melting of which requires 80 tons of fuel oil. From the five burners situated on both sides of the furnace spring flames some 30 feet long directed at the mixture, which reaches a temperature of 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to ensure even heating, the two batteries of oil burners work in shifts of 20 minutes each. The gases from the combustion are fed into the regenerators which are placed under the tank. These consist of large rooms containing stocks of refractory body made red hot by the passing fumes. The heat thus stored will be used in the next stage when the current is reversed and the hot air is used for combustion. The regenerators thus operate in conjunction with the burners. High precision controls form the brains of the installation. Their double task of checking and regulating the process renders the manufacture almost completely automatic.
The furnace is an enormous tank, 27 feet wide, 150 feet long. The height of the liquid glass is four and a half feet. That level is kept to the exact tenth of a millimeter. Floating refractories on the surface of the molten glass hold back the impurities which from time to time are taken off, the skimming of the bath. A full view of the tank shows the melting zone with the burners, then the part where the glass is purified, and finally the actual working zone over which we find the eight drawing machines that are working day and night without a break. Here then is the miracle of the birth of a sheet of glass. As it is formed, it is taken up into a tower 40 feet high where it cools slowly. When it leaves the machine, the glass strip is divided into sections. The thickness is regularly checked so that the product is kept within the strictest limits. This thickness depends on the speed with which the glass is drawn. The slower the speed, the thicker the glass. The factory produces glass of thicknesses ranging from single strength to five-eighths of an inch. When the upper edge of the glass strip trips a lever, an automatic cutting device is put into operation. The edges are always cut off. Their thickness is not regular, but they aren't lost. They're returned to the furnace. For mass production, the factory has machines equipped with several glass cutters. Soon this enormous sheet of univerbal glass will reflect the clouds in the facade of a new building. The glass that hasn't been cut at the drawing machines is taken to large workshops where specialized personnel cut out the required dimensions.
the cutter examines the sheet to find the best parts and eliminate possible defects this work requires a practiced eye and a steady hand Another expert checks the work of the cutters. Nothing escapes his attention and with meticulous care he looks over every sheet. He's responsible for the correct execution of the order and he certifies each consignment by slipping into the case a label bearing his identification number. Other labels indicate the quality and the thickness of the contents. Great care is expended on the packing. Each sheet is protected by a layer of specially treated paper. The packing cases for the glass, an infinite variety of types and dimensions are assembled. Before being used, the wood has been treated in large drying rooms in order to eliminate the last trace of humidity, which during transport might ruin the glass. Carefully, almost tenderly, each sheet of glass is placed in the protecting cases for the short or long transport to the destination, near and far. Every day, whole train loads leave the Univerbel factories to be transported to all parts of the world. Some 12,000 tons per month, that is more than 20 million square feet of glass. 80% of that enormous production is earmarked for export. And perhaps now we better understand the all-important role glass plays in modern life, in our everyday life. <laughs> Glass, that transparent protection against cold and rain and wind, reveals the world that surrounds us, the heartbeat and the spectacle of life. Life itself with which we remain in touch, thanks to that invisible wall. <laughs> 